What is up, everybody? It's your boy Nugs B, and I just want to give a shout out to all of the sponsors of hashtag TogetherFTR. The first sponsor I want to give a big shout out to today is Advanaclean of the Tri State, ran by Joel and Pam Dooley. Advanaclean of the Tri State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. Things like mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. Give them a call for a free estimate today at 606 331 five zero zero one and that six oh six three three one five zero zero one go ahead if you're on Facebook head over to their Facebook page at Advanta Clean of the Tri State. Give them a like be sure to share their page, send them a message and say Taylor sent you. And if you need to go to their commercial location, you can find them at forty four forty six thirteenth Street Ashland, Kentucky. And the second sponsor today is a great friend of mine. He is seriously, hands down, top two sculptors I know personally. And his name is Wyatt Freeman. W-Y-A-T-T-F-R-E-E-M-A-N. Look him up on Facebook. He's a sculptor, painter, he can draw, and just a great person all around. You can find him on Facebook, as I said. He is somebody I am recommending today that you need to get with as soon as possible to get some commissioned art. He charges a very reasonable fee and can do pretty much anything you need and will work with you very attentively. Shout out to you, Wyatt. Keep it weird, friends. Let's go ahead and get this episode started. Oh, oh. It's for the wreck of sun. Yeah. 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 up everybody it's your boy nugs b i am joined by ragnar you already know we in the building tonight episode 37 for the record hashtag together ftr how you doing tonight bro oh bro i'm doing great how about yourself it's been a blessed day it honestly has you know you were off work today yes i worked yes. for just a Most little bit finally for a while you know yeah I'm, i guess I'm, i got a tough week coming ahead of me though you know yeah for sure bro it was a pretty it was pretty dead tonight uh Kind of strange on the first Friday of the month, but, you know, you'll have that sometimes. It is what it is. Um, but, yeah, tonight we're going to start off, as usual, with the entertainment history, my friends. And today is September 7th, so if you're watching this, uh, some tragic things happened today in uh, music history and entertainment history. September 7th, 1996. Rap star Tupac Shakur is shot five times in a drive-by following a boxing match in Las Vegas. He dies six days later at only age 25. R.I.P. It was actually the year so, I was born. I was literally about three months old. Four months old. Young steed, you know? Crazy stuff. So 95? 96. 96. Yep. Uh, September 7th, 11. 1987. Michael Jackson releases Bad, the title track to his first album since Thriller. The song was supposed to be a duet with Prince, but the purple one turned down the offer. Man, I honestly don't know who I could choose between Prince or Michael Jackson. I really, I want to say Prince for real, in my heart. But then again, when I hear black or white, Bro, I hear man in the mirror. That's a tough decision, homie. Or you are not alone. Mm. Oh my God, Both Michael Jackson, some dude. Both oh my God, mm. such... Just such timeless records, man. Seriously, just such great stuff that came from both of those guys. Like an obscene Any song amount. comes on, you just can't. You love not it. Sing you it, love right? It. I mean, every time, dance to it. You were not Don't alone, matter. bro. Such a good song. 
Another tragic thing happened today, my friend. Uh, September 7th, 2018, rapper Mac Miller dies at 26 of an apparent drug overdose. So, RIP to Mac Miller, man. That uh, NPR Tiny Desk clip, you know, of him doing 2009. Dude, every time I see yeah. that, it gets me in my feelings, bro. Because, dude, he killed that. That song is seriously so emotional and so, like, relevant, I guess I could say, to, you know, just how, you know, people deal with different things, you know? Like, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know, dude. It's really sad and it sucks because, you know, drug addiction is such a horrific thing that people have to deal with. And it's just so sad because it's typically not even, it's usually trauma that does it to the person that makes them feel that way. But then they become an addict and then it just, it, it's, it's almost impossible to stop. You know, like I, I know so many it great your people. life. It really does. And it's just so sad, man, because so many great people do it. And, like, it literally discriminates nobody. Like, it has no discrimination. Like, right. it doesn't matter how good of a person you are. It can happen to you just as easy as it can happen to anybody else, honestly. I mean, it's it's just a horrendous thing that people deal with, man. And, you know, I'm really sad for his family. You know, he's real young. You know, same thing with Tupac, you know, getting shot. It's horrible, man. Uh, last thing for the entertainment history today, my friend. September 7th, <laughs> 2001, the movie Rockstar starring Mark Wahlberg hits theaters. And for those of you who have not watched Rockstar, I really don't know what you're doing. I really don't know what you're doing with your life. I just I feel bad for you at this point. I will cry for you. Um, you know, we'll definitely be praying for you and sending that good energy because you must not have had you know much knowledge with pop culture. And I'm sorry for you. But if you haven't and uh, you want to watch a really dope movie, uh, Rockstar by Mark Wahlberg, straight up. Get in it. 2001, dude, isn't it crazy to think, you know, like, it's so crazy that we're almost 20 years into the new millennium, you know, it's really weird, it's really weird to think, like, 2001, dude, like, I remember, like, I don't remember 2001 really, really well, I think I was in kindergarten, I do, I think I was in kindergarten or first grade, literally, in 2001, Bro, so you were, I was a sophomore in yeah. high school, <laughs> yeah, straight up, because... That's hilarious, man. Yeah, nine eleven. I was going into so, uh, art class when it happened. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. How much? I, that's how. Yeah, I think I was in kindergarten. How much I sure. remember? Like, yeah. I don't know. Pretty horrible, man. Pretty horrible. A lot of bad stuff happened Another in day. September, man. For real, a lot of bad stuff going on. Uh, so I got some quotes for you guys. I haven't done this in a while, and I figured I'd bring it back, man, because you know I don't know. I just ran across a couple the other day that were super awesome. Uh, and if you guys don't want me to do the quotes on here, just let me know. Give me some feedback, you know? Like, I, I want people to comment and be like, hey, dude, that was pretty whack. Why are, you, why are you talking about these quotes? We don't even care about this. Like, get it get it over with, you know, for real. But if you guys are feeling it, definitely let me know because I try to find the coolest ones I think of on that day or whatever. So, you know, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Uh, with the new day comes new strengths and new thoughts. And that was said by Eleanor Roosevelt. Every day I feel is a blessing from God. And I consider it a new beginning. Yeah, everything is beautiful by Prince. It kind of, you know, went into there it with, you know, with the entertainment history as well. Uh, there are two great days in a person's life, the day we are born and the day we discover why. And that was by William Barclay. Okay. Uh, I see the world being slowly transformed into a wilderness. I hear the approaching thunder that one day will destroy us too. I feel the suffering of millions, and yet when I look up at the sky, I somehow feel that everything will change for the better, that this cruelty too shall end, that peace and tranquility will return once more. And that was said by Anne Frank. Motivation, bro. Let's go, you, Anne you know. Frank. <laughs> it really, of all people <laughs> yeah. give out a speech yeah. and be motivated. Oh, dude. Let's go. And, like, you know, people who are in the – you know, the worst situations typically give the best advice, you know, I feel like. And it's so crazy and so ironic that, you know, I, I really feel like another thing I've experienced in life is the people who can't take their own advice give the best advice. You ever notice that? Like, it's it's like people, you know they could do so well, and they're telling you. And they're like, yeah, you can do this, you can do this with your life, you know, don't waste it, blah, blah, blah. And they're just wasting their life. I'm over here like, my life's garbage. <laughs> what am I doing? For real, I'm dude. Help this guy out, though. <laughs> hey, For boys. real, man. <laughs> uh, 
So I got some facts of the day as well. According to World Book Encyclopedia, so far scientists have named and classified more than one and a half million animals. Over half of these are uh, insects and other species that are discovered each year. Scientists believe there may be from two million to as many as 50 million kinds of animals that are alive today in 2019. It's a lot of species. <laughs> For real. It's a lot. It's serious, man. I think it's really, really cool that we keep finding, you know, all this, all these new discoveries about different things in nature that we didn't know about. It just proves that Bigfoot's real even more, bro. Ninety percent of them live I mean, in the water. Yeah, dude, for real. Bigfoot's like, living underwater, bro. He's got them portals, son. <laughs> Definitely, straight <laughs> up, he does, bro. He, it's like he's got them portals, baby. Mario style. Yeah, and for all you farmers out there, I don't know if you all knew about this because I sure as heck didn't. Uh, a hen with a white ear lobe will always lay white eggs, whereas hens with red ear lobes can lay brown, blue, or green eggs. Oh, that's crazy. Green eggs and ham. That's, that's where it came from. I do not like them the same I am. <laughs> it came from it came from, you know, these these red lobed, you know, hens out here just henning it up, you just know. Red lobe. Not being able to fly, you know, living living the <laughs> life of a chicken, you know. <laughs> And then they're just they're tainting our our eggs with their greenness, you know. I don't know what's going on here, bro. I'm getting nervous, man. These hens are making me nervous. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> your green eggs. Uh, last fact of the day, my friends: when glass breaks, the crack moves faster than three thousand miles per hour. To uh, photograph the event, a camera must shoot at a millionth of a second. Dude, how crazy is that? You remember that show? I think it was called Time Warp, maybe. And uh, on that show, they would, like, show you really, really cool stuff, like, in sl super, super slow motion. You remember that show? Yeah. It was on, like, Spike or something, Spike TV maybe. Dude, that show was sweet. <clears throat> For those of you who have not watched that, I'm sure there's plenty of clips on YouTube. Time Warp, I think it was called. Let me double check right now. But it was really, really cool, man. Whenever I had uh, – whenever I was living in my dad's still or whatever, uh, I still had cable. So I'd watch it, dude. It was pretty sweet. Yep, Time Warp TV. It was a series. Uh, you can watch clips on YouTube. You can watch full episodes on YouTube. Yeah, it was really cool, like bursting bubbles and like a dog like shaking, like after it had water on it and like just random stuff. But it looked really, really cool. It looks like this one. This guy's getting punched. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> that is pretty sweet, Get dude. Explosion. Get punched, no. bruh. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> no. Yeah, for real, dude. Um, so I want to take a second today uh, before I do our Raiders review. I'm going to add the extra R, bro. It's going in. Raiders review and recommendations. So there's going to be a new segment. Like I mean, it's not a new segment. It's kind of just adding on to Raiders review. But before I rate things or, you know, the guest helped me rate or, you know, whoever. Uh, before that, I want to recommend things for people to watch, you know, people to, um, you know, music to listen to, just a couple of different things I've been trying to think of to keep the show interesting for everybody and, you know, give you a little little funky taste, you know what I mean? Everybody needs a little taste of the flavor, you know? That flavor, baby. Flavor. I bring the flavor. That's how I drop it. You know, I drop that little, I drop that little thing on them, mm. son. Um, so the, the recommendations, and actually... These recommendations, uh, some of them are actually for local uh, charity events and local, you know, different things that are going on in September that you guys definitely have to go check out. And, uh, you know, just a lot of great things to help our community and such. And, you know, I just want to share them with you guys because, you know, if we don't work on our community and nobody cares about the community and nobody cares about what's going on, then that's how we get ruled. You know, that's how we become more so robots and just peasants than we already are, you know? So we got to be aware of things that are going on in our community, guys. Uh, so we got Saturday, September 14th at 9 a.m. Elks Lodge 350 will be hosting a charity golf scramble for kids with cancer at the uh, Diamond Links Golf Course in Catlicksburg, Kentucky. So again, that's Saturday, September 14th, 9 a.m. The Elks Lodge 350 will be hosting a charity golf scramble for kids with cancer. Then, on that same day, Saturday, September 14th, at, uh, this is going to be at 6 p.m. down at the Ashland Riverfront. They're going to be having great food, cold beer, along with the car and bike show. Gate, uh, you know, at 5, $20 to attend. Party starts at 6. 
So if you're out and about on Saturday, September 14th, if you can get down to either of those things, it'd be greatly appreciated. I really appreciate you guys, you know, uh, listening and, you know, trusting my influence and such. Uh, means a lot next to weekend. me. Next weekend. Yeah, next weekend. It means a lot to me, man. Uh, and then we got Wednesday, September 18th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the 10th annual Homeless Veterans Stand Down will be taking place at 624 9th Street, Huntington, West Virginia. Please arrive by 10 a.m. for the open uh, the opening ceremony, excuse me, and stay for a day of food and fun. So once again, these are all in September. These are things that are coming up. You guys need to go check out. Uh, we got Wednesday, September 18th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The 10th annual Homeless Veterans Stand Down will be taking place at 624 9th Street, Huntington, West Virginia. Please arrive by 10 a.m. for the opening ceremony and stay for a day of food and fun. So those are all the local things I got to recommend for you guys to go check out. And now I got some other things I want to recommend. One, Yellowstone. For those of you who, who have not watched Yellowstone, it is super awesome. The star is Kevin Costner. Uh, it's about pretty much just cowboys in Montana, uh, you know, and uh, kind of how his family goes. And, you know, he's been running a ranch for – it's been in his family for like 200 years or 300 years. You know, his great-great-grandfather started it, you know, so he's trying to hold it down with his kids. A uh, lot of great stuff in it. A lot of great actors. Uh, it's seriously it's, – it's, it's, it's probably on my top 15 best TV series of all time. I mean, seriously, man, it's good. Okay. okay. Uh, it's called Yellowstone. It's a Paramount Network. I'm sure you can find it on a Fire Stick or you know get it through some type of streaming service. I'm going to sure. assume. Um, so yeah, really awesome show. Next show I got to recommend. It's going to be the last one. Actually, I'm going to save some for next episode. Uh, Peaky Blinders. It's a Netflix original. Sep- uh, I think it might be September. Don't don't quote me on this. Let me look this up before I start running my mouth here. It's either this month or it's next month, but season five is coming out. Uh, The episodes are literally about six episodes apiece. I think one of them is eight or nine maybe. I don't know. I'll look. But they're not very long. You can pump them out pretty quick. So I advise all of you to get through season one, two, three, and four and then be ready for season five, man, because it's, it's definitely top ten, like for me. TV series, dude. I mean, it's really great. It's a gangster family epic set in 1919 Birmingham, uh, England, centered on a gang who sew razor blades in the peaks of their caps and their fierce boss, Tommy Shelby, who is Cillian Murphy, played by Cillian Murphy. Okay, okay. Dude, it's sick. Like, you know, they'll, they'll get it in their caps. You know, it's like the little the little bills, you know, like old school, and then they'll take it off and hit you with it and split you. You know, that's why they got, because they blind people, they hit them in their eyes, you know, the Peaky Blinders, it's like their, you know, it's their M.O. Uh, let me see here. Season five. So season five looks like it's coming out in October. Yeah, not, I, I spoke too soon. Not September. October 4th, it all drops because it's a Netflix original, so you'll get every single episode at once. It's going to be six episodes. Like I said, they're not really that long. Uh, so yeah, you can knock it out pretty quick. It introduces Tom Hardy. He comes into it. Uh, for those of you who have watched Game of Thrones, it has Littlefinger in it. Um, for those of you who know who Adrian Brody is, he was in the uh, remake of King Kong with uh, Jack Black. Uh, he was in Predator, the newer one. I mean, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Seriously, he's really great. He comes in season four as an Italian. Uh, I don't want to drop anything else for you guys on it, but definitely a recommendation today. And now we're going to get into the Raiders review, my friends. And uh, we got some pretty cool ones today, actually. We wanted to choose our top five hippie movies. So I'm going to let my dude Ragnar go first. And uh, go ahead and let him know what you chose, my friend. All right, everybody. My top five I decided to choose on was... uh... Number one with How High. Yeah, Method Man. Yeah. Red Man. Get the Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Second off, I got Helen Kumar go to White Castle. Everybody what loves Jesus her. Jesus do. Hey, everybody loves her little <laughs> cheeseburger sliders. Love son. the sliders, boy. Dude, you're mm. making me hungry, bro. After this episode, we're going to have to go get something to eat because I'm hungry, oh, boy. Right. Hungry. <laughs> bro, my favorite part of Helen Kumar, not to interrupt you, I'm oh, sorry. You good. But the, uh, when. Uh, uh, oh my God! What's his name? Anthony Anderson, I think. 
appreciate sure the name when they pull up to the uh, the I don't even know what it is like In and Out Burger or something. Yeah. They pull up to it. And he looks at me. He's like, I just want to burn this down. You know, they start going in on it, bro. That's seriously probably my favorite, uh, my favorite scene of that whole movie, bro. Or when the dude is out there singing, who's got all the boils on him, you know, he's like clapping and singing. That's I like when they, bro. they think they're extreme. <laughs> extreme. Extreme. They dive on the chips. Oh, yeah, King. <laughs> They're like, like on the like little like racks in the gas station. That's hilarious, bro. I forgot about okay. those. Cheech and Chong still smoking. Oh yeah, bro. Number two, that was the number two movie they made, right? Yeah. Up and smoke, then still smoking. Then it was uh, Nice Dreams, I believe, and then the next movie, and then uh, oh man, you got oh, uh, hold on. Let me hold on. I gotta pull that up. Boys. I can't remember, dude, what order they came out in. Uh, I'm pretty sure I named them right, dude. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Uh, let's see here. 78. Nope. I was. Oh, no. I was way off, bro. Uh, way off. Yeah, dude. There was a bunch in between those. Oh, it was yeah. Up in Smoke. Then it was the next movie. Uh, then it was Nice Dreams. Then it was uh, Things Are Tough All Over. Then it was It Came From Hollywood. Then in 1983, it was still smoking. So yeah, bro, I was way off. I feel like still smoking was like the one that really brought him back to like a big popularity, though. I feel like that's why I felt like it was the second one because Nice Dreams was good, but I feel like not a lot of people knew about it, you know. Right. Or maybe they did, bro, and I just am not aware of people who know it. You know, maybe I just don't know people who know it or something. I don't. I don't know. But anyways, so your next one was we got. Friday. Friday, baby. It's Friday. And first time at Ridgemont High. Ridgemont High, baby. Let's go. That's right, son. Yeah, uh, my first one I chose, I didn't really go in order, but, you know, uh, the first one I wanted to pick was Dazed and Confused, simply because if you haven't watched that movie, you're just not living, bro. L I V I N. You were not living, my friend. So just. Be cool if you did. Yeah, bro. It'd be a lot cooler <laughs> if you did see this movie because. Another thing that correlates with what I was talking about with Yellowstone, the guy who plays Benny in Days and Confused actually plays a character in Yellowstone named Rip, and he's actually my favorite character. Nice. I think him and probably Beth, which is uh, – is that her name? Am I tripping? I think it's Beth. I don't know. Uh, I have to look that up too because I don't want to be looking dumb on here. Uh, I already look dumb on here enough, so we don't really – we don't need all that. Um, let me make sure – Yes, Beth, I was right. Uh, Beth mm-hmm. and Rip are probably my favorite characters. Beth is Kevin Costner's daughter. Uh, Rip is just, uh, you know, helping hand. I'm not going to give his story up. I want you guys to watch it because it's super dope, and you'll love it for real, dude. It's really good. Uh, but, yeah, his name's Cole Hauser, and uh, he's like, you know, he, he's country-fed in this one, bro. He's all thick, you know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> like, he's a big dude, and he's, he's, uh, he's pretty sick for real in it, man. It's awesome. Uh, second movie I chose was The Big Lebowski, just because you can't go wrong with the dude. No. And Sam, you know, Samuel Elliott up in that, you already know, son. Third one, Encino Man. Wheeze the juice, baby. Wheeze the, Wheeze the, ju- the juice. Ooh. Brendan Fa- Fraser out here, son. Pauly oh, Shore, Sean Astin. Go. God. That was a hitter cast, son. Uh, then we got Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. You already know, so I don't even have to say nothing on that one. You can just let that one resonate, bro. Uh, next, we'll stick at this point. <laughs> next one I got is uh, my final choice, and that's going to be Grandma's Boy. Once again, if you say you're a hippie and you haven't seen any of these movies, you are not living your life. L I V I N. So hashtag together FTR on that one, bro. <laughs> uh, Next one we got is our top three dramas. And, like, here's the thing, bro. When we were choosing these, we're not putting them of all time. We're just kind of picked. We just saw some dramas we liked that we were like, you know, these are a top three. These are some good grade A dramas, you know, of movies. And I'll start off with mine. And my first one I chose was Good Will Hunting uh, with our boy Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Robin Williams. I mean, dude, the list goes on. This is serious, you know. Um, a pretty good tag team duo. Oh yeah, bro, for sure, for sure, dude. Uh, and then we got my second choice, American mm. History X. Uh, and anybody who hasn't seen that, Son. you, you got to go check this one out. Uh, you know, right now, because like, one, 
it's one of the best lessons. It really teaches you a lot about life. I mean, for those of you who are, you know, scumbags still and don't know how to treat people equally and be cool and, you know, whatever, it's a great movie that will really teach you, you know, a valuable lesson, I feel like. And it's pretty brutal, you know. Bro, like, there's a lot of brutalness to it as well. Edward Norton's awesome. Dude, I love him. Bro, the Illusionist. Like, Bro, that movie was sick. Like he is... Rounders? Great. Excuse me. Rounders was phenomenal, bro. Fight Club, of course. It's a classic, cult classic, bro. I think they should have kept him as the Hulk. Yeah, he was pretty dope, but from what I read and what I had uh, been told from some uh, certified nerds, you know, shout out to my peeps, uh, I guess he was like kind of acting like a diva on set and he wanted a bunch of money and... But granted, he's a great actor, you know, right. so I mean, I get it. You know, I'm not like hating on him, but that's just what I read and that's what I heard. Okay. So the mm-hmm. internet could be wrong and maybe he just, I don't know. I don't know, but that's what I heard. Hey. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, though. That's why he didn't stay the Hulk because technically that Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, is still in the MCU. Right. It was going to be, it was the first installment of that Hulk that in that universe. That's how it yep. was supposed to be. He was going to be it. You know, like, that would have been awesome. I love, you know, Mark Ruffalo or whatever. He's dope, but I don't know, man. I feel like Edward Norton would have, you know, he would have done his thing. I really do. Uh, The third one I got today is The Departed because, once again, you don't even have to say nothing, man. Like, that's just one of those. It's got everybody in it. My favorite character probably in there is Mark Wahlberg's character. He's, like, the sergeant, I believe, or he's, like, a lieutenant or something. Just, you know. Definitely pretty, good. pretty awesome, dude. Uh, but that wraps up my dramas, man. Go ahead and uh, shout, you know, holler at him, let him know what you picked. You know, you got to holler at my boy, Morgan Freeman. You already know you got to so, throw him in there. That Shawshank Redemption dude, song. Dude, it's rated number one on IMDb, like best movie ever. It really is, I dude. Mean, it's ranked like the best movie ever. It it's hit, good, dude. It, it hits home. It really is, dude. It's a real good movie, bro. Schindler's List is my second one. My friend, also another movie that I feel like everybody needs to watch. You know, it's one of those that you know really gives you perspective on you know different life and definitely different life, how things are, and how certain people actually grew up. Yeah, for real, dude. Yeah, it's pretty devastating stuff, honestly. And uh, the last one you chose was Saving Private Ryan. Probably one of the best military movies we've ever seen. Oh yeah, literally. I'm gonna say that. Mm. Black Hawk Down. Uh, Full Metal Jacket was great, too. It was good, man. Uh, I'm trying to think. Mm, I'm trying to think grade A. Let me see. Uh, We Are Soldiers. That was a good one. Flags of Our Fathers. What was it? Wind Talkers. I don't know if I saw that one. It's Obviously, it's about... Uh, the Navajo language. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It wasn't bad. That's what's up. Heck yeah, bro. It's awesome. But Saving Pat Ryan is really, seriously, one of the best, man. Like, for sure. It really is. So, yeah. But anyways, uh, so that's the recommendations and the Raiders review for the night, my friends. Don't forget, this is episode 37. I want to give a shout out to my dude, Few, for the shirt. You already know. Few Apparel. Go check him out. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out to Andy Art. You can go check him out on Facebook. He did the graphics for uh, the profile and the cover photo um, for For the Record, hashtag Together FTR. And I really appreciate him and uh, you know what he's been doing for us and stuff. Also, I want to tell you guys to take a second and go to www.togetherftr.com and buy some merch, watch some episodes, even share the link, man. I'm cool with anything for real. And share also, some love. Yeah, absolutely, dude. And uh, if you guys got a second, go to YouTube. And if you're already on YouTube and this is where you're at, make sure to subscribe. Uh, throw us a like on this episode. Share it. Tag some friends. Drop some comments. You know, all that good stuff, man. So we're going to go ahead and get straight into it, people. So this is what this episode is about, all right? And I don't even... I'm conflicted about the whole thing, too, you know? Uh, We just had to do this, didn't we? Gosh, just scared, nervous about how I feel about this. Uh, Jeesh. No, No, uh, realistically, though, this episode is going to be about Marvel versus DC. 
and how yeah. Marvel is literally just slaughtering DC, and DC sucks besides with cartoons and their comic books, and that's really about it. That's all they got. That's all they can do. Trash. Like, Any of you DC lovers out there, bro, get real. What do you got? Young Justice? That's all you got. You got Justice TV League shows. Unlimited. You got the Dark Knight series, you know, with Christian Bale, because that's, that's sick. Those, those, that's sick, sick that series has been so good. It was so good. The trilogy was yes. phenomenal, bro. Seriously. Very much so. Give you that. Yeah. Uh, and you got Shazam now, because Shazam was good. Yeah. Aquaman, also good. But you can't hold a torch to the original X-Men in like the late 80s or maybe early 90s, something like that. I mean, face it. You, you dropped the ball with Green Lantern. Yeah, Green Lantern sucked, bro. Garbage. Horrible, bro. I mean, Deadpool, Let me tell see. you. Original X Men cartoon. Yeah, Deadpool. That's where Ryan Reynolds needs to live, bro. Uh, came out in 1992. Yeah, early 90s, bro. That was seriously probably the coolest cartoon that anybody's ever seen in their life. Definitely one of my favorites. Bro, it is like, too good. Theme song. Yes. Burn out. Well, but do that orchestra was so cool. Like, bro. I mean, this was insane, dude. And I mean, Gambit was perfect. Looked the one way he favorites. needed to look. One of my favorites. Wolverine looked perfect. Jubilee. I mean, dude. I mean, Cyclops was a tool bag, but I mean, he still always needed has to been. be there. I mean, you know, he Scott always, Summers, you know, he whatever. Has been. He's a blowhard. But uh, yeah, dude. So that's just how I'm going to start this conversation about Marvel. So you got X-Men <laughs> 1992, bro. Probably the greatest cartoon you've seen in your life. Um, and then you got, let's just go X-Men, X-Men, or X2. And then X3 was decent. It wasn't that bad, but it was, eh, it was all right. I mean, but, but the first one was good, bro. And they were all three pretty decent. But you got to think. Then you got Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and then that's but, just the X-Men. Yeah, the, the- yeah, the new cast. That's just the X-Men, bro. Right. We're not talking about technically Sony owned Spider-Man or whatever the deal is with that. But we got Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Far From Home. Uh, Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Bro, those are all pretty great movies, dude. Like, the third Spider-Man sucked with Tobey Maguire. It wasn't really that great. I, I just watched it the other night just to, yeah, just, just to watch just it. Just to laugh at yourself for liking honestly, it when you like, younger, you know? I was going to watch it. I was like... You know, Man, I am so glad Tom Hardy is now Venom. Yeah, bro, he really <laughs> like, is. Yeah, instead of Topher Grace, yeah, bro. Like, Tom Hardy's actually pretty sick as Venom, dude. I'm not going to lie, see, and I between, hope they keep that going. Between the two, like, I was like, man. Dude, I was so you saw glad. Shazam, didn't you? Yes, I did. Dude, back to DC, though. Like, I'm not trying to flip-flop, but I am, because, dude, hey, Shazam was, was good. Like, Shazam was good, bro. That really might redeem them in my eyes, bro. Hopefully. I really hope, too, man, for real. But then we got, okay... Let's go ahead and be clear, though. DC also has, once again, another TV show, once again, another cartoon, Teen Titans, bro. The original. Not Teen Titans Go, because that's garbage. But the original Teen Titans, bro, I could go back and watch that right now and be so happy about it. I would not be mad about it. I would be pumped. It was a good anime. Dude, it was sick. It was so good. The animation was dope. Uh, you know, you had Deathstroke, you know, Slade, you know, like he was like the main antagonist, you know. Dude, Dude, he was sick. Um,. So that was sick. Young Justice was sick for DC. But flipping back to Marvel, we got to think. We got all those Spider-Mans I just named. We got all those X-Men I just named. Uh, Let's see here. The Spider-Man cartoon, The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Friends. Um, We got... Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got... Spider-Verse. And we got... um, Oh, man, there was something else Spider... Spider Spider-Man did, too. Uh... I can't even think of it. Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one was sick too. Yeah. But, you know, you got a lot of great stuff that came from just those two. And then we got to think, Marvel also did Blade. So that's one, two, and three for Blade. about to get a reboot. Oh, yeah. With, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but I know exactly he was in Luke Cage. And that's another, that brings me to my next one. The Netflix originals on, uh, you know, the TV series, Luke Cage was fire. Daredevil, fire. The Punisher, Fire. They were all so yes. good, bro. So good. Iron Fist was eh, eh. kind of whack. Not really all that dope. It was decent. I watched it, but I didn't really enjoy it. I wasn't happy. I wasn't like enjoying myself. Right. Uh, I never watched Jessica Jones. I saw The Defenders. It was meh. It was decent. It's all right. It wasn't too bad. I, I, Daredevil was sick, though. I did like watching the uh, DC um, 
Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. I never saw it. That was all right. I heard it was real good. It, it was, dude, actually. My, well, you know Nate. Nate uh, told me it was pretty dope. Good, I don't think he, good I think story he between, said, of actual, you know, um, oh, what's his name? Mm, I don't even the know what it's guy. about. Um, yeah, I really don't even know. But, but it's still good. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Nate who told me it was pretty dope. I, I can't okay. remember if it was him, but he said it was pretty sick. Uh, but I'm also going to bring up another point about DC. Like, they do have their TV series on point, too. They do. Like, The Flash was good up until, like, season three. Green Arrow was good up until about season four, maybe. Or three, maybe. Like, those were really good, dude. I was really, really into The Flash. Those were good man. ones, like, yeah. It was legit. But, like, after I see, like, five of the same villain, like, I'm just like, dude, I'm done with the speedsters, bro. I want to see something cool. Right. He has other enemies, bro. I don't want to keep seeing the same dude over and over and over fight the same power that he has. That's whack. I don't want to see that. It's we lame. all know he's more, he's more than that. Yeah, bro. We, I don't like, like the time travel aspect of it either. I think that, I think that's lame. It, it, it makes it too complicated. The simplicity is better than the complication, especially when it comes to TV shows, bro. Especially if they're cable TV shows. The CW is what did it. It's not like it was HBO. Right. It could be complex, you know, or like stars or something, you know. But I just, I don't know, man. I don't know where they, they just, I don't know, it was just so repetitive and just lame to me, dude. But they were good when they first started. They really yeah, were, man. Definitely. Uh, what else? Marvel, dude. Fantastic Four was kind of whack, so that wasn't really that mm. good. That's not really a good reference. Supposed to be getting a new one. Yeah, well, they had that other one too, and it was garbage. Oh yeah. So I mean, I just I kind of gave up. Uh, let me see here. Cause I think they're trying to work on. No, I'm trying to do think, I mean, Galactus. Spawn was Marvel. It was pretty dope. Oh too. yeah, Spawn. Spawn was pretty good, and it's getting a reboot as well, dude. That's gonna be pretty sick. I can't wait. I mean, we could. I mean, I didn't want to bring it up because it's just the obvious. But the obvious Avengers movies that have came out for the MCU are obviously the biggest thing in MCU, and right. you know, biggest thing in Marvel or whatever. But like, aside from those, I'm trying to make other points. Deadpool, you know, what I mean, Deadpool. we were talking about Deadpool and Ant Man. You know, Ant Man. You know, like all, dude, all this stuff is good, man. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's serious good stuff. Doctor Strange was sick. That was real good. Uh, technically, Howard the Duck is Marvel too, so you know we Which gotta throw crazy. him in there. You like, know, my old dude. I remember watching that movie, that. Up. dude. I'm gonna go ahead and just be clear on this, bro. Guardians of the Galaxy is seriously one and two are like my. They're on my top five. Like, like Guardians of the Galaxy number one is like on my top five best MCU movies, bro. Hands have to, down, have to, have to, bro. I mean, it's seriously. Great as a movie, you know what I mean. The action's really, really cool too. But you know, as a movie, man, it's really, really good. Love the humor. And the thing was, man, it's really funny because like Daredevil is so corny now. When you go back and watch it with Ben Affleck, but when I was a kid, I loved that movie. Bro, bro. I thought it was so I was sick. Like, yes, and, yes, uh, Electra. Yes, she was so smoking Fire. hot. God, <sighs> man, two thousand three, bro. I was in second grade, literally. Loving Daredevil, loving every minute of Daredevil. So depending on what, what part of 2003, I was either becoming like the end of my junior year. In February 2003, so the beginning. So I'd be, uh, yeah, I was a yeah. junior, you would be a senior. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, he got a horrible rating, 5.3 on IMDb, as it should, because it was garbage. But it was so dope when you watched it, like for that time. So good, bro. And there's like this really cool theory that like Hell's Kitchen and like all of that realm right there, uh, the teenage Mut the teenage mutant Ninja Turtles are supposed to be intertwined in that like that little part of New York. Right. You know what I mean? Like that, like the burrows and stuff. Like Luke Cage is there, and Iron Fist, and like you know they said that the Ninja Turtles were like you know supposed to be in that part as well. That's know, pretty dope. Defending, you know, like I thought that was really really cool. That is cool. Did Those you like the, the new ones? The new ones that came out, the first one that dropped, and then uh, the Out of the Shadows with the big the Rocksteady and uh, Bebop and Rocksteady. I can do you, actually, dude. I thought they were sweet, bro. Like I, I like. How I took they made it for exactly big. what it was. I like how they made them bigger. Yeah, they were like, you know? they were like, actually, they were like, uh, like sea turtles almost, like big turtles, bro. But, like like scary. As, you, as you would, you know, Raph being the biggest. Yeah, for sure, know? bro. All buff and stuff. Like, yeah. I love the way they did Donatello, though, with his tech. I thought it was really, yes. really cool how they played his tech, bro. Like, you know, I thought it was just, I don't know. Everything about it was just really, really well 
you know, um, produced. It makes me want to watch it tonight. Like, it really does, bro. I'm like, man, I kind of want to watch that now. <laughs> like, that movie was super, good. super cool. Um, yeah, dude. So, like, I, I, I figured I'd get your opinion on it and see what you thought. I definitely oh, thought yeah. they were really cool, man. Like, the first one was really sweet. You know, I like Megan Fox, you know, for what she is. She's not, like, you know, a great actor, but, you know, she's hot and, you know, whatever. Like, you know, like, that's just what it is. That's like, it is. I'm not trying to be sexist and be a piece of, a piece of garbage, but... You know, we got to be honest, you know, like straight up, it is what it is. And she's not that great at acting. She got where she is because she's hot. Like, that's just how the world works. It's one of those sad truths, you know, roles where they we all live in a sad truth. Like, you know, that's just happens to be one of them, that women who look good will be treated differently than men who don't look look good. Exactly. Or women who don't look good. Like. Hot women will get treated differently. It's just a sad truth we live in, dude. Straight up. And I don't condone it, and I'm not cool with it, and I don't support it. I just acknowledge it, and I keep it moving. Like, I'm not going to sit there and, like, not acknowledge that hot women definitely get treated differently. Right. Because they're hot. It has nothing to do with their talent or their focus or their determination to be a good actor or, I mean, actress, sorry, uh, or anything of those sorts, a good worker, whatever it may be. And this also... Don't be, you know, getting your panties in a wad, all you social justice warriors, <laughs> because I'm not trying to say that women can't be hot and still be smart, because that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, Tulsi Gabbard, she's, you know, uh, running for president, and she is very, very attractive and also very, very intelligent. I'm not sitting here putting down women, you know what I mean? I'm just <laughs> making it very clear that if a hot woman is getting treated differently, it's typically because she's hot. It's not because of her. It's not because of her wit, you know. So I feel like that's a pretty educated, you know. Uh, that's a pretty educated observation, you know, because it's not really a fact. Because it's not always right. true, but it's right. an observation of experience in life. You know, it's just one of those sad truths, man. Also, have you watched the New Chappelle stand up? No. Oh, dude. What am I doing I was, in my life, bro? Seriously, I told Wheeler to check it out earlier too, bro. He oh, hasn't watched man. it yet either. It's good, man. It is good, and it's, like, really funny because, uh, you know, it, like, I, everybody I've talked to about it and I've explained it to who's watched it or, like, explained it to somebody who hasn't watched it, I always explain it, like, it's not really like him telling jokes. It's like a monologue, like, Carlin style, you know, like, George Carlin style, like, old school. You know, he used to do, like, one a year on HBO or, like, something like that, and he, it wasn't really, like, jokes. Like, they, like, he was joking and he was doing stand-up, but it more so was, like, sad truth and, like... You know, a lot of cynical stuff, you know, like a lot of stuff just like talking about the world and, you know, the, you know, uh, I guess you would say how things are going in our world, you know, just the the timeline we're in, you know, really speaking about how things are going. And that's kind of what Chappelle did. I don't feel like it was him telling jokes. I feel like he was up there just kind of like being, giving a monologue about truth and it happened to be funny. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, you'll see what I'm saying when you watch it. It's dope, okay. though. And it's hilarious. Like, I mean, there's some good parts in it, bro. There were some parts where I was cracking up. Because in every stand up, I give everybody a chance. But even Chappelle, I try not to, like, I try not to laugh just because. You got to make me laugh. You got to earn it. You know, like, I want it to be funny. I want something to be really, really funny for me to laugh. I want to cry. I want to cry. I want my gut to hurt. I want my cheeks to hurt because I'm smiling. I want to hold myself. For real. Can't move. Yeah, dude. Crying. Seriously. Uh, So for those of you who don't know, uh, working hard on the comic book again. Uh, Also currently looking for animators and looking for artists who are wanting to be involved, um, you know, in the comic book and or animating uh, an anime of a, of a universe I've made and such. So, you know, my cousin and I have created a pretty awesome universe and want to involve some other people and, you know, try to bring a team around it and see what we can do with it, you know. Heck yeah. Pretty sweet. I uh, want to take a second and let you guys know what movies are out right now you need to go check out. Uh, Angel Has Fallen. Uh, Gerard Butler and uh, Morgan Freeman... Uh, we got Good Boys, which is, uh, I can't really even explain it, inappropriate teenage boys having a good time. I don't even know. It looks really hilarious, though. I haven't watched it yet. Okay. Uh, it Chapter 2 is out now, uh, so definitely go check that, that out. Good. I need to go see it for sure. 
Uh, Overcomer, which I heard was a really good story. Uh, shout out to my dude BJ. He said it was you know a pretty good story or whatever. Ready or not, you said you wouldn't watch that. It, it was a good movie, man. Yeah, like, you recommend it. It twists me up a few <clears throat> times when I thought I had it. <laughs> it, nope. That gets you, bro. That's those are movies okay. I like. I like when you it, can't bro. guess. It, it was good. Yeah, when you can't guess, bro. One movie that you can watch that you can't guess and it kind of fooled me from the jump, bro, and got me was Den of Thieves, man. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys have ever seen that. It's got Fifty Cent, Draw Butler again. Uh, it's got Ice Cube's son in it. It has uh, I'm forgetting other people, bro. I can't think off the top of my head, but it's got a pretty all star cast around it. You know what I mean? And uh, it's one of those, like, I literally, it fooled me. It literally fooled me, bro. Like, I never would have expect, it, you know, I never would have expected what was going to happen. Couldn't guess, bro. It was good, though. I liked it, man. I really did. Heck yeah, man. Uh, yeah. So those are the movies that are out right now. Definitely go check them out, guys. And, uh, you know, I got to ask you something, my friend. I asked Wyatt on the last episode. If you had to say one game besides Fortnite, obviously, oh, that you spent a hundred hours on or two hundred hours on, what would those games be? Uh, well, one that probably has, honestly, I've spent way more hours in Fortnite than probably World of Warcraft. <laughs> I swear to God, dude, World of Warcraft is at the top again, man. A lot of people are playing it. It's supposed to be real dope. Everybody's loving it. It's crazy, man. What other games you got that you played more than a hundred hours on? Uh, Final Fantasy. Dude, I never really got into Final Fantasy like that. I didn't really give it a chance, though, I guess. I don't know. Those are my type of games back in the day. Fair enough. A lot of, a lot of role play, a lot of just sit down, take my time, yeah, explore. Yeah, adventures. Yeah, I, I like adventure games. I really do like Crash Bandicoot. I thought that was, that was a one I started. Devil May Cry 5 right games. now. Devil May Cry? Dude, I haven't played that in Those forever. Those are fun. I enjoy them. Last time I played Devil May Cry was probably for GameCube, bro. Word. Old school. Oh, man. Yeah. GameCube, man. I used to rock the GameCube. It was pretty sick. It was. I had uh, Pokemon XD, I believe it was called. Real good Pokemon, dude. It was about, like, the dark. Like, when dark started coming into Pokemon, like, you know, you have, like, the dark evolution of Charizard and, like, the dark evolution of Lugia. Yeah. You have, you'll have light and dark Lugia and Ho-Oh and, you know, all these other things. Uh, and I had it for GameCube, dude, and I stomped that game. It was a lot of fun, dude. Nice. It was, like, the first Pokemon that I remember, it, w- it was. I'm pre- it was like the first Pokemon after Pokemon Stadium that had like good graphics. It wasn't a Game Boy. I think it was right. like the first one that wasn't a Game Boy uh, game is for the console maybe. You know, XD, dude. It was good, man. I can remember how it was laid out and everything. Okay, that's what's uh, up. I'll tell you one game I spent a lot of time on was Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse 2. Dude, I played a lot of that game. Word. I, like, capped my saying out in, like, five days or something, bro. Jeez. Like, I was playing it constantly, dude. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Raging Blast 2 was really fun, too, man. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I love Dragon Ball Z, though, man. The games have always been Budokai. sick. I enjoyed Budokai. Budokai, yes, bro, for PlayStation 2. Yeah. Budokai 1 and 2, and then Tenkaichi. Those were... And then, uh, what was the one after that? I think Tenkaichi was the first one where it's, like, 3D, kind of. Yeah, that's when the, uh, I think I think it was, where you could uh, fly around, yeah. destroy uh, environments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't remember what the order was of them coming out. I'm going to have to look that up now for sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, DBZ game release order. Let's see. Oh, crap. There was other things that came out. Oh, no, no, no. This is from, things are going to be released now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it says 2020. I was like, huh? I was like, dude, uh-huh. man, what is going on, bro? Like, for real. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there were some in the 90s, bro. Uh, but they weren't, like, the great, though. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the first one was probably Budokai that was, like, good. Because that was 94, dude. That's cr- Nah, I don't think there was any good ones. That were, you know, I remember playing that one, though. Legacy of Goku 1 and 2, that was good. Not bad. Budokai Ten- Tenkaichi came out in, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. This is where we need to be. 96. When did Budokai come out, dude? 2000. Yeah, 2002, bro. That was the one that really changed it, bro. Like, it really did. That was the one where it was like, I don't know, man. It just felt so good, like, when you were fighting. Then we had Budokai 2. I don't even know how to say that. I'm not going to try. Uh, Supersonic Warriors. I remember that one. I don't think it was that good, though. 
Booze, uh, booze for uh, Fury. I remember that. Budokai Three. Wow. Sagas was the first one where you play like 3D. I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure. And then it was Budokai Tenkaichi, and then Super Sonic Warriors Two. Wow, I was way off on how they came out. I had the second one, Budokai Two. Yeah, I that had. One was fun. I had Sagas. You had on that one. Yeah, 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 fuse. yeah, dude. That was sick with Goten like, and Trunks. Go yeah, Tanks. If you had them as your teammates. Yeah, dude. You hit that the was butt sick. just right. You get a fuse. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, boy, let's go. Dude, for real. I still think my favorite fighting game ever is Tekken, though, dude. Tekken, Honestly. Tekken is a good one. Tekken 5 and 6. They were so good. I enjoyed Tekken dude, a lot. So good. Steve, he was always my favorite. The boxer from New York, man. He was super dope. Uh, and, like, in Dragon Ball Z, who, who do you usually fight with? Like who did you fight with? I guess. Uh. Trunks. Trunks is always a go-to. He was up. Kid more. Trunks is dope too. He's uh, quick. Honestly, when I played, let's see, what do I have at home? You have Dragon Ball Z Fighters. Yeah. That's like the newer one. So that one, that one, I run various ones. Yeah. But my older ones always was like, go, honestly, it was like Goku and Vegeta just because I like the fuse. Yeah. Because I just end up having, saying four. Yeah. What other, what, what all did they have? They had Vegito. Uh, I can't even remember all their fusions, bro. I know Vegito was one. Vegito. Uh oh my god, I feel like I'm forgetting. Uh Vegeta. Gogeta. Yeah, Gogeta. I forgot about that one. Yeah, that one was dope. I think those are the only two that they uh that they do. <clears throat> Vegeta from the Black Goku arc is stronger than Vegito from the Boo saga. Gogeta from DBS probably would be stronger than both of them. It's all simply because Goku and Vegeta are getting stronger themselves. So, if Gogeta and Vegito happened at the same time, according to DBS, Brawly, they would be the same strength. Hmm. Right on. He says, the best fusion is Vegito. Is it clear that Vegito is the strongest? Is the fusion of the two strongest warriors? That's it's lame. It doesn't really make sense. Gogeta. Hmm. Gogeta and Vegito. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Those are pretty cool fusions. Though. I remember like when those like got brought. You know, like I remember watching it. You know, like Ugh. crazy, bro. Because like I think v- I think Vegito is from the earrings from the Kai's. Yeah, and, and then, then Gogeta is like dance. the dance. Yep, yeah, the arc dance. yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's Go Tanks. Go Tanks comes from the dance. Yep. With Go Ten and Kid Trunks. Well, regular Trunks because the other Trunks is from the future. Right, future Trunks. So yeah. But yeah, man, DBZ has always been super, super dope, man. Really has. Uh, I mean, you gotta think, too, that something that's like, with Dragon Ball Z, it's always been like, in most animes, dude, it's like morally right. Like, you need to watch that, bro, as a kid to be a good dude. Like, I feel like to be an alright dude, you gotta watch DBZ and Naruto. You Why not? Know? Like, learn that even though, you know, <laughs> you're destroying Cell, you want it to be even, so you throw him a sensor beam. <laughs> like you want him to be on your level, right? So you can slap him around when he's actually on your level, and they never Lame jump thing. nobody. Let, let thing. <laughs> like yeah, like here like, you go. Uh, oh, you I'm think you're bad? You. Yeah. All right, hold on. I'm gonna help you. Oh, you think you here, think so? Oh, you think I'm this. beating you down just pro sensor beat? Like you know, while you're down here, hold on a second, bro. Yeah. Here. Let Crazy. me know when you're ready. Yeah, bro. I'll so, be over here waiting. Okay? Yeah. You just let me know when you're waiting. Cell was Cell was a thug too, bro. He was a thug, bro. He was seriously probably the strongest, the the worst villain they had faced. Like all the way up to GT, you know, because Boo was like pretty dangerous too. But Cell killed everybody, bro. I mean, Frieza killed a lot of people too. But like, I feel like Cell really. Boo just was brainwashed him. until Kid Kid yeah. Boo was came out. That and then, it was evil, right? Yeah, that's like because obviously Boo himself was a good was a good Majin guy. Boo. Yeah, he yeah. Majin Boo's what yeah. was bad. Uh, was it? Was that how the story went? Because it was Super Boo, Majin Boo, Kid Boo. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I think you're right. You I might, could be wrong. I think you might be right. I could be wrong. But yeah, dude, uh, Kid Boo was evil. I knew that Super Boo was evil. I think, and I think yeah. Majin Boo was good. Maybe. 
He had good intentions. Maybe so. But, uh, but Bobby always just commanded him to do yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. When he broke Bobby's spell and like killed Bobby's when he like really. Yeah, it's been a minute since I've watched that saga too, bro. I mean, I, I probably need to go brush up because it's been a minute. It was, it was one of the good sagas. Oh, it was definitely, bro. DBZ was the best that Dragon Ball's done. Granted, I haven't watched Dragon Ball Super, so I don't know how it's going or whatever, but. Dragon Ball Z was just next level. Honestly, bro. I think the saga I didn't like. Saiyan Saga kind of sucked. Raditz yeah. and Nappa. It did, but you know you do have and to have Vegeta. where he's. You started. need it. You need it because then you get Vegeta. Yeah. You know. You get to, you get Vegeta's story. Yeah, and then he comes and you figure out everything about him and him and Kaka- Kakarot become you know rivals. So you do need it, but it sucked. It was lame. It was lame. You meet Piccolo in that too, I think. Yeah. Pretty sure you meet him in the Saiyan Saga as well. He was Goku's enemy at first. Mm-hmm. Or was he in Dragon Ball? Dragon Ball. Yeah, I think he was in Dragon Ball. I think there were enemies in Dragon Ball, maybe. Which, I mean, I've watched Dragon Ball, like, skimmed over, but I don't think I've watched it, like, in its entirety. Because even through Saiyan and uh, Frieza Saga, like, mm-hmm. Piccolo necessarily didn't... He's kind of like an anti-hero. Well, he still wasn't his friend, but... Yeah, like, they were just, like... They were like, and it was like right. him and Vegeta, kind of. All right, this, all right, I'm going to help you because this is going to affect me sooner or later as well. So. Pretty much. That's pretty much how it was. And then after he trained he was Gohan. Then they were tied. Yeah. He was still kind of hateful. He's bitter. Always. Piccolo is always so bitter. <laughs> Gohan! He's just like yelling, you know, like, Gohan. <laughs> <laughs> always got that, that look Special on his face. Special beam cannon! You know, like, he was always just so <laughs> angry, dude. Yeah, like, just very angry and raspy. You know, a little raspy Japanese guy, you know? Like, what's going <laughs> on, dude? But, yeah, man. Once again, guys, uh, thank you for tuning in so much. This has been a wonderful episode. Episode 37, for the record, hashtag together FTR. And those of you who have been tuning in, we got a lot of great stuff coming out. Might be, I don't know, man, maybe doing some different stuff soon. Uh, you might be seeing us some other places, so we don't even know what's going on, man. We're just living our lives. Stuff's in the world. You know what I mean? We we L I V I N. You feel me? Um, living it so up. yeah, go check out www.togetherftr.com. Uh, go buy some merch. Go watch the episodes. Subscribe to YouTube. Thank you guys so much. It's been a blessed day, and we out, baby. The real nugs be night, guys. <laughs>